respectability politics. To give it a quick definition, respectability politics is when members of a marginalised group are expected to suppress or contain or hide elements of their identity in order to fit in with the group in power. Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham has been credited with naming the phenomenon. It appears in her 1993 book Righteous Discontent, The Women's Movement in the Black Baptist Church, 1880 to 1920. So that phrase, respectability politics, has actually been picked up by pretty much every liberation movement, from disabled people to people of lower socioeconomic backgrounds to trans and queer people, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. For us in the LGBTQ plus community, respectability politics manifests itself as a need to assimilate into heteronormative and cisnormative society to become more normal, more like them. It's a form of self-policing that happens within our community, within ourselves even, that goes on to prove not just that we're like straight and cis people, but that we're not like those LGBT people, the ones who are too loud, too proud, too outspoken, too gay or trans. For me, it's sort of another form of closeting, being perpetuated by our very community in order to be taken seriously and have our concerns listened to. The idea that we have to be respectable to be respected. By suggesting that it's the responsibility of LGBTQ plus people to change themselves rather than society changing to accept them, we're essentially saying that marginalised people are at least in part responsible for their own oppression. They just weren't trying hard enough to fit in, because that's what they should be doing. Now this is dangerous for many reasons, not least because it creates the idea that it's the fault of the most marginalised amongst a community for the oppression of that community in general. That if those people would just try harder, if they would just be better, if they wouldn't be so gay, so black, so disabled, then discrimination would just disappear. It's only because of them that discrimination is happening which is obviously nonsense. It becomes more awful when we think about the fact that there are people within these communities who aren't just refusing to change in this eternal rebel image, but because they can't change. The ideal form of a trans person is someone that someone might say, oh, she doesn't even look trans, I never would have known if I hadn't have been told about it. And in a way, this creates the idea that the only trans people who are worthy, the only ones who deserve respect, are those that pass as cis. But of course there are people who don't want to pass as cis and people who just can't. And it shouldn't be that those people are excluded or marginalised further just because they aren't living up to this ridiculous idea of respectability politics. My own experience of respectability politics is frustrating as hell. For a lot of people, on the outside at least, at first glance, I completely fit in with the respectable idea of what a gay woman's meant to look like. I'm very femme, I'm not overtly butch, and that's something that's seen as an ideal. I see my own identity co-opted as the idea of the good queer. I become unwillingly complicit in erasing members of my own community. And that's horrible. I think the important thing to remember about respectability politics is that even if you fit into that ideal, you become respectable but you don't become respected. We can also see these ideas played out in media, what kind of characters are allowed on screen, there's very few activist LGBTQ plus characters, for example. There's also very few HIV positive characters. And if there are, they're probably going to be in the historical or period pieces set during the AIDS crisis. And they will have contracted HIV in a respectable way. They'll most likely have also been in a monogamous relationship. All of these things are essentially to make it so that an audience can sympathise with them as if, if those weren't the case, they wouldn't be worthy of sympathy. Roland Emmerich has said of his film Stonewall, You have to understand one thing. I didn't make this movie only for gay people. I made it also for straight people. I kind of found out in the testing process that actually, for straight people, Danny's a very easy in. Danny's very straight acting. He gets mistreated because of that. Straight audiences can feel for him. There's a brilliant scene in the TV show Queer as Folk, where a character, Michael, is meant to be making a speech about the idea that Whoever we are, straight, gay, cis, trans, bisexual, we're all the same. And he starts to make the speech and he looks out over the crowd and the fact that they've put all of the straight and cis journalists in the front and everyone in the LGBTQ plus community has been pushed to the back, standing room only. And he realises it's not true. And he just starts to make his own speech and talks about the differences and the fact that actually there's nothing wrong with that. It's fantastic that you have that kind of diversity. It's fantastic that people have these identities that they can feel a part of, however strange they might seem to mainstream society. And I think that's ultimately what we need. 
we don't need to be policed about the way that we look, the way we dress, the way we speak, the way we act, the way we present ourselves. Because ultimately it's not hurting anyone else to be true to ourselves, but it is hurting when we're forced to be something that we're not. These changes that we make within ourselves to be a certain kind of gay person, to be more respectable, to be worthy for our relationships to be taken seriously, for our rights to be taken seriously. That compromising of ourselves shouldn't be a tax or a price that we have to pay to be equal. So I hope you found that interesting. I'm gonna leave another video here if you want to keep watching. And if you'd like to help support me make these videos, I'm gonna leave a link to my Patreon below, along with links to all my social media so you can find me all over the internet. Until I see you next time, bye.